Researchers may be closing in on an explanation for the true center of consciousness in our brains. However, like most things in science, nobody can agree. But some new research may shed light on it. There's two major arguments for consciousness, and they get a little bit silly. One of which is the brainstem, what's required for us to have sleep and wake cycles. If you don't have a brainstem, you only have delta brain waves, ones that somebody might have if they're in a coma. However, that may not be wholly satisfying because there's more to being conscious than just being literally awake. We have internal monologues, we have imagery. Not everyone even has an internal monologue. The other part that scientists have been really focused on is called the thalamus. It's a part of the brain that is involved in processing sensory information. Really, you have a complex structure that takes in sensory information, sends it to all over the brain, and relays it to different areas to make decisions. One of the big questions about consciousness is, do we have a seat of consciousness? Is there somewhere where your internal monologue, the observer, lives? And of course, as you guys know, because I love the topic, we can grow tiny human brains in jars if you want to and have them operate a computer or a robot. And one of the big arguments for them not having consciousness is that they lack a brainstem. Granted, you can put all the brain parts that you want and put them into one complex structure. You can even grow them separately. As for the question of consciousness, we can actually observe the thalamus functioning as sensory input comes in. We can watch electrical signals as someone turns their eyes, and we can see how the brain is processing information in real time. I am of the mind that consciousness happens, at least in some way, when you have enough neurons. When enough neurons are communicating with each other, they start to be able to differentiate and start to process more complex information. There's been this hard problem of consciousness, supposedly. It's more of a philosophical question than anything else. How do you get something to feel and experience? What does it mean to have a concept of self? It is a hard problem in a way because it doesn't have an answer. We can build robots that can perceive the environment. They could even perceive themselves in the mirror, which would qualify them for consciousness at some of our most basic tests. Remember, there are two definitions with consciousness. One is medical, and that is the sleep-wake cycle, and one of them is philosophical, and that is the concept of yourself as separate from others. In fact, children aren't really conscious till they're maybe over a year old. Because we can't at least measure a definitive concept of self. When a child is born, they can't recognize themselves in a mirror. As for our little brain organoids, which really raise a lot of philosophical questions, they only have delta brain waves. But the longer you keep them alive, the more their brains start to resemble a premature baby's. Their brain waves start to become more complex. Their gene expression looks exactly like a premature babies, but human babies, if born prior to nine months, will not have anything other than delta brain waves until they get to the point where they would have been born normally. As we start taking human beings and growing them outside of another human being, we might have better answers to these questions about how consciousness develops and when and how our brain develops. Ultimately, we're never going to have a satisfying answer to the hard problem of consciousness because it's a philosophical question. And if you know me, I'm not a big fan of philosophy because there's no real answers. You talk in circles for eternity.